Song? Do you know the uh, meaning of your name? Do you know the meaning of your name? What? Meaning of your name. Do you know the meaning? What's your name means? Yeah, um, mm. If you know it, I'm amazed. <laughs> but um, I think knowing the meaning of the name is important to know the wishes of our parents. Uh, for example, my older sister's name is Nozomi, which means hope. And my name, Yuki, means brave. And my younger sister's name is Ai, uh, which means love. But the Chinese character, uh, you know, Japanese people are Chinese characters for their names. And Chinese character for my older sister, Nozomi, means hope and beauty. And my name, Yuki, means the path of salvation beyond oneself. And I is to rely on Amida Buddha. So it is interesting to know what was the wish of our parents from knowing the meaning of the name. However, something is wrong in young Japanese couples nowadays. <laughs> I read the news that some couple named their baby Pikachu. <laughs> Do you know Pikachu? That is the name of the popular character from the TV game and animation called Pokemon or Pokemon. You know, when Pikachu becomes grown up and he gets a girlfriend one day, his girlfriend tries to talk about him to her friends, right? And she say like, hey guys, you know, I'm now dating with a boy, and he's so sweet. And our friend might say, wow, congrats, what's his name? His name is Pikachu. <laughs> so, our friends might think that a girl was our mind. <laughs> and it will give a hard time for Buddhist ministers too. When a person passed away, we read the name of the person, the day of passing and age, right? So. I stand in front of the uh, incense father and I say, we gathered here today to adopt, observe the memorial service for Mr. Pikachu Tanaka, who passed away on June 12th or something, at the age of 85. And his grandchildren come up to give a word of remembrance. I miss you, Grandpa Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> so, although they are making a wish of the parents, that they want their baby to be cute, like Pikachu. It doesn't sound right, is it? Um, so when you have baby, please don't name your children weird name. <laughs> so the name contains a wish of our parents, as I said. But sometimes parents become too greedy to put their wishes in their name, the name of the baby. And this is a story uh, about a couple who just had a baby. A long time ago, there was a couple who just had a baby. Their family name was Yamada, a really common name for Japanese family. They haven't decided the name of the baby for seven days. <coughs> the father thought, it's just a baby's name. It can be anything, like Hachi or Taro. It's a common name for them. But the mother wanted really nice name for the child, which contains great meanings. So the wife sent her husband to the temple to ask Buddhist minister for the guidance. Hey, sensei, how have you been? We just have a baby, and we cannot decide the name. So we came here for your guidance. Do you have any auspicious name for the baby boy? Oh, I haven't seen you since you graduated from Dharma school. <laughs> How have you been? Oh, yes, yes. Dharma school students come back when they become parents. That's a good thing. But I hope I see them more often. Hmm, boy's name. You know, Juge. That 
that is good name. That is from the sutra, and it means infinite life. Oh, it means infinite life. Infinite life. That's good name. Do you have any other suggestions, Sensei? Hmm. How about Boko no Surikire? <laughs> Boko means five colors. Suppose there is a gigantic rock, which is a mile square. A deva comes from Ashita heaven and touches the rock with her toss once in 100 years. And she comes and touches once in every 100 years until the rock worn away. That is a kawa. So, boko no suike means really long time. Oh, it means long time. Sensei, that's good name too. I better write these names down. The father asked us again and again for ideas of the name, but he couldn't decide which ones to choose. So finally, he decided. You know, Sensei, it's all good names. So I use all the names you suggested for my baby. All the names? No, 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 no. You can choose just one. And you have to ask your wife to, okay? Okay, okay, Sensei. I will ask my wife and we try to choose one name. And he went home. But the father didn't listen to the minister and used all the names which the minister gave to him. So the baby's name became Jugen no Jugen, Boko no Suiki, Kaijari Suiyo no Suiyo ma Zunrai ma Zunrai ma Fume no Tokoro ni Sumu Tokoro, Yamura ko Oji no Kura ko Oji, Paiko Paiko no Shurin ga, Shurin ga no Furin ga, Furin ga no Honpokopi no Honpokona no Chokyu me no Chosu. Long name, long name, and you will hear this name a lot from now. And when he grown up, he got friends. And his friend came to pick him up to go to play one day. Hello, hello, good morning, good morning. Oh, who's there? Oh, Ichiro, what brought you here today? Hi, Mrs. Yamada. Is there a Jimmy and Jimmy and Boko on the same day? I didn't say, I was like, 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 <laughs> we promised to go out to play today. Oh, you came to pick him up. Oh, thank you, thank you. I think he's still sleeping. Wait there. Hey, you can move, 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 you takes forever. He says, Yamada, just tell him we are waiting at the park. And you know, small kids, they fight all us tiny things sometimes. And at the park, Jugem argued with his friend. He couldn't hold his hand and hit his friend's hand. And the friends got a bump on his head. So the, so the friends called Mrs. Yamada. <laughs> Let me see, let me see 
you are happy, you know? Mm. Hey, don't tell us a lie, you know? There's no bump on your head. That's insane, because our name is too long that the bump went away over it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a story uh, from traditional, traditional storytelling called Rakugo. And Rakugo is usually a funny story, but it originates in Buddhist Dharma message. <coughs> and again, I don't know what kind of message this story wants to convey. But probably, uh, we can learn two things from this story. One, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. And two, it's really important. Don't hit, don't hit your friends head. <laughs> Unless you have really no name. <laughs> no, I mean, don't hit your friends. Okay? And be nice to your friends. Okay? Because it is an act lacking friendship and understanding. Right? So this is the kids' message. I hope you got something out of it. <laughs> now, it's really hard, so it's hard to think. Um, I'd like to um, go into the adult stuff now. And I'd like to share the words of Shima Shon uh, from the preface of his master work called Kyogyo Shinsho, uh, the true teaching, practice, and realization. So please join me in that show. Please be sure to ask me about it. How joyous I am, Budoku Shindan, disciple of Shakyamuni, where is to come upon the sacred scriptures from the westward land of India and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan. But now I have been able to encounter them. Where is it to hear them? But already I have been able to hear. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's service. And can you believe that today is the last Sunday of June already? It means the half of the 2017 is almost over. And this is my fourth Sunday as a minister of Oregon Buddhist Temple. And I wrote on the newsletter how to call me. I, I don't know if you recall it. And some people call me Yuki or Yuki-san, and some people call me Sensei or Reverend Yuki, but no one calls me oregon san <laughs> Do you remember this story from my newsletter article? In Japan, um, many people call minister by the temple's name. So my home temple is Korinji. So uh, the people call me Korinji-san, Korinji-san. Or Korinji is Yuki-san, Korinji no Yuki-san. But nobody called me Oregon-san. <laughs> this is Oregon Buddhist temple, but nobody calls me Oregon-san yet. Um, I look, you know, I have a business card and it said Reverend Yuki Sugamaro on my business card. But do you know the origin of the word Reverend? No. I think I don't have to name my favorite group anymore, but the Oxford English Dictionary said, <laughs> Reverend is from all French, or all from um, all Latin, Reverendus, Reverendus, which means person to be revered, person to be revered. And according to this origin of the word, norm, of the Jolo Shinshu ministers are reverent because we are not the one to be revered, but the Dharma is, Amida Buddha is. So we are all students of the Dharma. We are all students of the Dharma. So after reading this definition, I feel it's kind of strange to say I am Reverend Yuki. You know, I know Reverend is just a title now, but I feel like I am saying 
I am Yuki, the one who you should be with you. Right? That sounds strange. And sensei is really difficult word to use too. Sensei is someone who teaches something to someone. But my understanding of Buddhism and Jodo Shinshu has transmitted from many teachers before me. And I am just passing. I'm just passing what I have learned. And then the Japanese old saying I am trying to follow. It said, Minoru hodo hobe o taru inahota. Minoru hodo hobe o taru inahota. That means the vowels that bear most and lowest. The vowels that bear most and lowest. And as we learn many things, we begin to feel that we know many things. And we often tend to be like this. I know. I know things. But many of the teachers I know, they are really modest and humble. So I am trying to imitate them, but often the mind of self-conceit appears in my mind, and I start to be like this. According to Shinburism teaching, Amida Buddha, you know the statue in the middle, that's Ashakamuni Buddha, that's Amida Buddha, right? And Amida Buddha, Buddha of immeasurable wisdom and compassion, established the 48 vows to save someone like me, who has the three poisons, self-conceit, jealousy, envy, and so on. And when I hear this, when I hear this teaching, I feel appreciation to Amida Buddha, but also I feel shame of my self-conceit. So this balance of joy and shame is the heart of Nen Buddha. The recitation of the name Namo Amida Buddha, that's the Nen Buddha. Anyway, uh, there are many senses I respect. Uh, Reverend Tomoyas Naito, a professor emeritus of Yukoku University, is one of them. And he published many books but I couldn't agree more when I first read one of the words from his book. He wrote us, There is no true joy of encountering if we are taking something for granted. There is no true joy of encountering if we are taking something for granted. That's true, isn't it? And how many people felt as, I'm so happy that I was able to come to OBT today and hear the Dharma. No one? <laughs> when we are taking something for granted, there's no true joy of encountering. And I think we need to think about this words of Reverend, Reverend Michael deeply. So what I shared at the beginning is the words of uh, Shina Shomi. He knew that it is rare to encounter the teaching all the way from India. And nowadays we can go to India just in one day by airplane from PDS to Bombay or something. Or we have distance, smartphones that we can Google and learn about India easily. And we can Google what is written in the sutras too. But when Chinese people tried to import Buddhism from India, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Many monks tried to translate Indian philosophy into Chinese, and they traveled all the way from India or Central Asia as translators. That means they had to cross or travel great desert and mountain ranges. That was a trouble risking, risking one's own life. And one of the most famous translators' names was Kumarajiva. Kumarajiva. Kumara, Kumarajiva. Kumarajiva. From 4th century. And you know the Amida Kyo. Amida Kyo, which uh, we chant at Shotsky Monthly Memorial Service. That is translated from Sanskrit to Chinese by Kumarajiva. And can you believe that we are still chanting something handed down to us from 1700 years ago? 
And it is amazing that we had opportunity to encounter this Amida Kyo, Amida Sutra. But when we chant Amida Kyo, I don't think we are feeling appreciation to Shakyamuni Buddha and or Kumarajiva, do we? Instead, I'm we feeling that, man, this sutra is really long. <laughs> But when we think about the efforts of Kumarajiva spreading the teaching of Nembutsu, so Nembutsu, to, uh, Nembutsu told in Amida Kyo, our feelings will change when we chant Amida Kyo next time. And Shakyamuni Buddha said in one of the sutra, or the larger sutra, where is to encounter and where to behold the Tathagata, even in countless millions of Kalpas. It is like the blossoming of the Udumbari, which seldom occurs. And I think I talked about the flower of Udumbari before, but it is a flower which bloomed only once in 3,000 years. Once in 3,000 years. Shakyamuni Buddha is saying that encountering the Buddha Dharma in this life is just like encountering the blossom of the Udumbari flower. It is really rare opportunity. You know, I guess we would be happy to go see a flower it blooms only once in 3,000 years. If there is a rose which blooms only once in 3,000 years at the rose garden, I'm sure we would stand in line to see it. But how about going to the churches on Sundays? you stand in line to come to church to listen to the Dharma. And it doesn't have to be church or temple. Anything which surrounds us. Anything. Anything. Think about it. If we can meet something or someone only one time in one lifetime. We feel that everything is rare to encounter. But we have the mind to take things for granted so that we cannot truly feel happy or joy or living. You know, it's like uh, my daughter Aoi, I don't know where she is, but she used to have few chances to eat sweet stuff, like ice cream, in one month, just you know, maybe a few days in one month. So she was really happy and excited to eat ice cream when she had a chance to eat it. However, now she has a long chance to eat ice cream or sweets. And she used to eat until last drops of ice cream. But now, she doesn't. She's probably taking ice cream for granted and probably thinking that she could have it tomorrow too. And I use my, you know, Dora as an example, the same thing as Hi. In the United States, eating cake is probably not a rare thing. You eat cake often. You eat cake. You eat cake often, right? But my mom was really strict, and I only had few times, such as a family member's birthday, was the only time I could eat cake. So I was waiting for someone's birthday to come when I was a child. And it tasted really good because I only had a few chance to eat cake in one year. Now I have grown up and I can buy things by my own responsibility. So I can buy cakes or ice cream or anything. So I don't think I'm enjoying the cakes or ice creams as I enjoyed as when I was a child. This is probably because I have one now. But surely, because I have a feeling that I can buy it any time. So I too have the mind of taking something for granted. And we always have the mind to take something for granted. And don't you think it is hard to realize something we always have? However, by encountering the calling of Amida Buddha, the light of wisdom, we are able to realize we have the mind of taking something for granted. 
And there was a man named Mam named Genza, the Myokomi, uh, who deeply enjoyed the teaching of Nebuzu. When he was about in his 80s, he looked at his hand. He looked at his hand and said, How strong my hands, which I received from my parents, are. I don't need to replace the finger or anything, like replacing the blade of space or holes. But it still works good. And I've been using these hands for almost 37 years. But I never felt like Genza did. That is because I always have the mind to take these hands for granted. And we don't realize how grateful to have something until we lose it. Like our health and our loved ones. So if we are taking something for granted, then there is no true joy or, or happiness of encountering. Like greeting to the family members in the morning, going to school or work coming to OBT and listening to the Dharma. And we often take these things for granted, but it is really a rare opportunity. Each encounter is based on the complex causes and conditions. So for me, for me, the working to wake me up to this truth is the working of Amida Buddha. So my mind of taking something for granted, in the other words, my ignorance is illuminated only by the light of wisdom of Amida Buddha. It is not my, not my power to realize my ignorance, but I am realized by the calling of the Buddha as Namo Amida Buddha. Saying, hey Yuki, there's nothing you can take for granted. So I accept the calling of Buddha as thank you for reminding me. That is when Buddha. Everything can be grateful because everything is not something we can take for granted. And we can truly enjoy when we realize there is nothing we can take for granted. So I hope today's message made you something to think about. And I'm sweating now, so I have to close my message now. <laughs> so thank you all for coming today. And in closing, please join me in that show. Please switch your mouth together. How joyous we are, members and followers of Joro Shinshu teaching, disciple of Shakami, where is to come upon the sacred scripture from the westward land of India and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan. But now we have been able to encounter them in the United States. Rare is to hear them, but already we have been able to hear. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo Amida.